Hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Got another video for you today. Today's video is going to be on digital painting a comic book character. So let's get started. Uh, I've already drawn my character. I uh, called this character Mr. Amazing. Uh, excuse me if there's any likenesses out there or whatever. This is just purely for, you know, demonstration purposes. Uh, I doubt I'll ever take this character any further than what you see here. So. You know, he's just got a set of goggles like the shape of an M, and uh, yeah, he dubbed himself Mr. Amazing. So, all right. So at any rate, uh, let's go ahead and close off the artwork. That's usually how I start. So I've got my line, line art here, and I'll just make sure <clears throat> so I get the right brush here. One second, shape dynamics. You know, even though you know this isn't a finished piece so but I would like <clears throat> close off the hand or whatever just give him a little club hand there or you know better yet I'll just take it all the way across here this is just uh, a sketch I made just so I could kind of explain this process so which bear with me everybody because I'm I'm not a advanced digital painter uh, I'm more into the, the work that you see here, like the line art illustration type stuff. But uh, the more the more I've been, you know, getting further into things, I've been doing more and more digital paint. So I'll try to do my best to explain it. Uh, but I'm learning just like you are. So like I said, just bear with me and we'll see if I can teach you a couple things you might not have known or maybe a different workflow. All right, so I use the uh, Magix wand to select around it since it's good, clean black and white artwork. Uh, on this side, it selects with no problem. Select inverse. Uh, I'll make sure I deselect the other guy because we're not, we're not going to be using that. I just want to show you kind of where it goes from, uh, you know, the progression. So hold Alt and I can drag the lasso around that or box and deselect that. <clears throat> now, what I'll do is go select, modify, contract. And I'm using Photoshop CS6 just in case you didn't notice. Uh, I'll move that in two pixels and now I know I'm behind that character's line art um, and really I'll even just copy this character right now so now he's solid he's on his own layer you know if I drop this out of the way he's kind of by himself floating there and that's what I want um, so I'll kind of zoom in and the benefit of working like this is now I can lock pixels right here and I can turn my brush to you know a gray tone or really I'll leave it all the way to black but then I'll turn my opacity down and now I'll grab my <clears throat> painterly brush which I typically use just a regular hard brush I call it a marker brush but all it is is transfer is set to pen pressure on both settings of opacity jitter and flow jitter and that just gives me a nice marker feel and I'll use that to paint uh, usually people anyways if I do something else like creatures or cloth or fabric I use something with a little more texture to it but you can get a little bit of texture even out of this brush just by your overlapping strokes uh, and your varying levels of pressure <clears throat> and you know you just start building in your tone your value you know designate your light source always you know a lot of times I'll draw a picture of my arrow and my light source right on there uh, but I got the line work to go from, like for instance, the shading under the arm here signifies that, you know, there's, I, I guess I don't show a whole lot of light source here, but <clears throat> to me the light source is to the top, uh, uh, top right right now, so, or subject matter. So I'll just kind of start blocking in some, some shadow. You know, not not worrying too much about being clean right now. I, I probably could even be a lot messier than what I'm doing. Because, you know, you got to figure you're going to go back through. You're going to re-highlight. You're going to smudge. Uh, a lot of what you want to do in digital painting, and this is totally up to you, but what I do is um, <clears throat> I smudge the line work away. So I usually keep a copy of it to the very end. That way if I want to... Uh, blend in some of the line work back in there or color the line work and put it back over that looks pretty cool at times but kind of the purpose of digital painting is no line work like you know painting is usually 
more based on reality and reality doesn't have uh, you know we don't have lines like this in our our faces and stuff you know I mean you know when you get really old you obviously have lines in your face but like I have a bunch of those starting to appear as I stay up late at night drawing comic books but <clears throat> but the uh, you know we, we don't have like these black lines flowing through us so so that's where you gotta you know just look at that and come in with your smudge brush and you start blending this stuff up and turning everything from lines to tonal values and seeing how much of a realistic depiction you can get with that and on this particular smudge brush I don't have any uh, scattering enabled uh, keep in mind if, you, if you're ever trying to smudge in Photoshop and you uh, you're not you're not blending as well as you'd like to you're just doing this because if you look uh, if I went like this through my character it's gonna smear all the way through it right and if I keep pulling back and forth uh, with good pressure hard pressure so it keeps that darkness in the line so I think a lot of people have a, a problem starting off with that and they're they're wondering why their smudge settings aren't blending as well so you got you got what I would call smudging and blending so if if that's an occurrence for you because it was for me uh, you can actually create another brush where you enable shade, uh, scattering just a little bit I'd start small and work your way up I think I have mine set to about 20 percent and it becomes a nice uh, blending brush at that point so if I'm just trying to take areas I guess I can show you as I'm trying to tell you so say I'm gonna blend I don't know um, under his neck here and I want to I want to blend out those lines right there but I want a nice smooth transition right there I don't want to define line so I grab my smudge brush I'll take it from the marker to the I call it blending brush smooth sm <laughs> smooth uh, which I am not obviously uh, transfer pen pressure the other one's grayed out scattering to 20 percent now watch the difference here as I go to uh, blend this out where am I at right here so now it's a nice smooth transition you know I can easily get it to you know an even gradient it's not uh, I don't know smearing around as much as the other one but there's a lot of instances where you do want to use the smearing effect because you kinda get in this habit of pulling your shadow where you want it so that's why some of these guys can get really insanely fast with digital painting because the part you're not seeing is that they're actually pulling the shadow to the direction they want they're not stopping applying another shade of gray stopping applying another tone of red or whatever they're working with they're actually getting to the point where they're just going hey I'm gonna turn this line and this line into a shadow all at once and they're pulling it right into that area and it's in turn it seems like a time saver so that's that's just my understanding I don't know if I'm entirely accurate there but I figured I'd give you my little uh, you know my my little take on it there again I'm not the most uh, uh, seasoned of uh, a digital artist I'm just just kinda learning like you are so I guess we shall learn together So yeah, so I'll just kind of keep building texture in there. Now one that I do like for hair, and this is a Photoshop brush. Where is it? Right there. Boom, hair. You see how it's already got strands like that. Same settings, transfer on pen pressure. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the blending brush. Go to the painter. Hair. Yeah, pen pressure, pen pressure, no shape dynamics. And you can, you know, again with the low percentage so that you can keep overlapping. The reason why I turn that opacity down is I want the ability to create some texture before I get to my darkest point. If it, if it was at 100%, I couldn't very well keep overlapping like this unless I had just the world's lightest touch and you know get to all this cool texture that I'm trying to build in there. So with the lower opacity, you can do that. At least that's how I function when I do this stuff. And see, I'm not being real elegant about this. I'm just kind of crisscrossing as I'm going, and it'll start building some of the texture naturally. And then, <clears throat> then I'll go from there and pick apart, you know, pieces that I think look cool and accentuate them and darken and highlight and all that jazz.
and then X to flip back and forth from white ink to uh, black ink. And that's how I work, you know, predominantly. <clears throat> I use a little bit of the the dodge and burn at the very end, but not much. I the more I do it, uh, the more I just paint with black and white now. And I'm actually probably getting ready to make the jump where I just start painting with color because there's some other parts about this process that kind of bother me and you know it's still a cool process it, it worked well for me because I uh, coming from a comic book background I see in black and white a lot better than I see in color uh, not literally but design oriented with my art the way that I draw uh, it lines up better with me so so that's why I went this direction but there's certain aspects where it's just a lot more um, straightforward to paint with the colors and work from that. And I think I think that's the way I'm going to eventually go, but for now I'll just keep doing this. So I'm back to more of my marker brush. Oh, Shape Dynamics, I want that off. I just want to paint in some uh, quick solid pieces here. Kind of define some shape in this mask. And, you know, one other thing I would recommend when doing this stuff is really start to pick up, you know, portrait uh, books and, and magazines. Even though you're going to be doing comic book stuff or if you're going to be doing comic book stuff, it's still very important. You can look at a portrait. In fact, this is a good exercise to, to get yourself better at this stuff. Look at a portrait that has nothing to do with your subject matter other than the you like the lighting in the picture. And that's it. And try to take that lighting from that picture and implement it into your illustration and do things like that to cha uh, challenge yourself because um, that's going to happen later on especially when you're trying to produce you know on a deadline and you find this perfect reference matter for something you're trying to to get out but it's not the right pose it's not even you know you're drawing a male and it's a female or whatever um, it's very important to be able to train yourself to grab just the lighting from that scene or just some element from it and finish what you're trying to get done uh, that's where professionals can get stuff done and, and amateurs just kind of look at it and go huh you know it's just it's just something that comes with time you know and, and I'm not saying I'm some all-knowing great artist I, I struggle with deadlines and I, I have a mediocre uh, you know set of things that I even have to accomplish at this point because I'm not full time just knocking out art but I do have some deadlines I do have some commercial pro uh, projects and yeah it's it's something you realize real quick when you start working in art for a living so be ready for that it is not all fun and games it's just cool that you're actually doing what you like to do but of course you don't want to let anybody know that because then they'll expect you to do it for free it's always awesome The trick is to make them think you hate it. <laughs> People always seem to get paid better for things they don't like to do, so just pretend like, you know, no, I really don't like art, I just do it because, you know, I'm so good at it. But other than that, I, I really, you know, I'd rather be out there busting up bricks in the hot sun or digging ditches. I couldn't think of nothing. <laughs> I thought that was a really bad job, and then digging ditches popped in. I always remember people complaining about that, like that's a that's a bad job. But hey, works work. I would take anything. That's that's always been my deal. I've never been too proud to work. And as I digress from the subject. Okay, so, should probably get back on this. I'm, you see I'm just slowly working the tones down because I'm, I'm not uh, overly confident as a digital painter at this point. So I don't, like, just go right in there and go, bam, 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 I want this here, that there. I slowly work up to it. You know, like even this shoulder, I was kind of wondering if I wanted to put that much, you know, darkness down. But I want to round out this shoulder. And make him look like he's got a bit of muscularity there so I put that darker shadow on the base 
I don't know why I'm smudging with this brush. Um, let's go back to the smooth one at this point. There we go. I'll show you how nice this blends. And I always use uh, varying directions and varying pressures. So, you know, one of the parts that you can't see what I'm doing, you can only, or I'm sorry, you can see what I'm doing, but you, you don't know what I'm doing as far as, you know, the amount of weight I'm bearing down on this. Um, obviously, I want to get rid of these lines, so when I come up to the lines, I'll press just a little bit harder. I'm still pressing pretty darn light. And that's also going to vary based on, oh, that is something I want to cover. That's going to vary based on your Wacom settings, which is a totally different thing than what we're going to discuss today, but you need to get in there and learn those. So you got your pressure sensitivity in your Wacom, if you're using a Wacom, uh, your, your settings in there, and then that in conjunction with the way that you set up your brushes. So I just want to make that, uh, I want to put that out there because, you know, I, I could imagine a lot of people that you know, don't know what they're doing or their their first time in it, they might try something and go, well, God, my my uh, mine doesn't work, or you know, maybe that artist is better than me. It's not, the, you know, it's more than likely it is not that. It's just your settings, man, are a big part of it. You know, I wasn't getting nearly the results until one, I figured out how to adjust my brush settings inside Photoshop. That was probably the biggest thing. For a while there, I was using a lot of it like uh, glorified mouse, you know, and didn't even know it. But, you know, and that's all right here. That's why I leave this open so you guys can see it. So I remember when I was watching a lot of these videos, nobody ever touched on that. I mean, now it's more common that people explain that. But it is a really big part of getting your stuff to work out well. You've got to have the right settings or it's not going to work for you. So, at any rate, there's that. And... So you see how quick and easy I can blend that? I mean, I'm, I'm actually taking my time here, and it's still relatively fast. I say taking my time because I'm actually a very slow digital painter. I see some of these guys just pump this stuff out. It's like insane. But I'll get there one day. Okay, so, you see, but you see what I'm doing. I'm just turning these lines into shadows. And then, you know, I haven't got to my highlights yet, but I'll keep working this down. You know, I'm just kind of picturing where I want the heavier shadows to hit. Like something like that. You know, get some of that anatomy and get some of those muscles going in there. This would all this whole area right here would be in shadow, and that's where looking at your uh, you know your muscle magazines or your you know sports and fitness or whatever you're getting your your reference for for your comic book stuff. Looking at that stuff is is essential. A little lag there. Okay, and that's I'm saying thinking this whole face needs to be toned down a bit more. By the whole character, I. It seems like the more I I start doing this, the more I realize that you really got to tone the character down pretty far, and then slowly bring it back up with highlights. So, you know, try it. You know, different ways for yourself. One of the reasons being this: when I get to color this, because you see, I'm at this point, I'm still only great toning the whole thing. But when I go to color this, I use overlay, uh, and co actually color mode and overlay, and varying levels at the very end of uh, normal opacity layers, right? Well, the overlay and color mode very much work off the uh, the, uh, the values that I'm putting down right now. So it's very important to put down a good amount of that or the right amount, and therefore you'll get the right colors when you apply those layers. So oftentimes I'll put the overlay and color mode layers on and then I'll actually go back and deepen the tones of the uh, the initial line work or shading that I did because you know maybe the the reds just don't pop as well as I thought they would. So it's amazing kinda how dark some of your tones need to be and how very little 
you need to use highlights to bring that stuff out. And you see that when you take this uh, this approach. It's also the reason why when I was telling you earlier that I'm probably going to start going to painting with solid color, uh, why I'm probably going to make that switch because it's kind of uh, it's kind of annoying to think that I've got the tones just right and put it down and I'll get like four or five of the colors to work well and then one won't. And at least when you're painting with color, you can see that, you know, almost well, immediately because you're you're painting with that color. So. Okay, well, that's pretty sloppy, but I want to hurry up and fly through this and, and you know, show you the, the meat and potatoes of this kind of thing. So, all right, so there's, say that was my initial, come on, say that was my initial tones, you know, I, I got some cleaning up to do for sure. So we'll start with that. So there he is, he's got some tonal value. Oh, let me do some quick highlights. Highlights, I'll generally, you know, same thing, I'll start with the hard brush, I'll block in some uh, larger areas of the highlights, like so, kind of define the light source, you know. Bada boom, you know, just real fast. Nothing. This isn't going to be a immaculate drawing. Like I said, this was just me kind of playing around anyway, so it's not like I was trying to go for something amazing here. Mister amazing, but not amazing. Okay, so then I'll do kind of. Usually, I'll throw in this like little brighter light source like this. Let me zoom up and do that a little better. more defined highlight, you know, kind of brings it out, you know, the glint in the eyes, the highlight on the mask. The I don't know what you call this the edge rim lighting I think it's called. So you kind of throw in some of the the rim lighting effect. Oops, even though I went way off the line there. It just helps bring parts of the character out. And if you can't tell already, I overdo it. I probably should have stopped a while ago. But okay. But it's hard to stop something when it's fun. Okay, good enough. Yeah, too much. See, it starts to wash it out. Like, I shouldn't have added all these ones over here. So, let's do the amazing control Z thingamajig. And figure. So, we got right to the part where I wanted to get rid of those. But, that's when you just go back and blend. And that's the other thing about digital painting. Um, at least the way that I'll do it. I'll actually paint back and forth. Uh, like I would take this back and forth a few more times, dark light, dark light, to get it where I really want to see it. But for the sake of this, uh, you know, tutorial, I'm just gonna kind of fly through this part and get to some color. All right, whatever, something like that. So now I add a color layer, like I was talking about before. Where we at layers down here add a layer put it on color mode uh, the good thing is my character is still selected and pixels are oh no I'm sorry I'm gonna color right on top of this just to make this faster so I'll do myself a favor hold alt slide over makes me a copy go back to this other one over here and start dropping in some quick color um, what do I want to do? Probably, uh, let's try a lighter blue kind of suit. 
for the dude. We're going to paint right on there. So we're going to put color mode on over here. Since the pixels are locked, I can just kind of scribble it in. It grabs the, uh, the area really fast so you can fly right through it, which I love. It's a huge time saver. So I'm surprised a lot more comic books aren't digital painting because really, you know, I don't even do this method that much and I see some of the aspects of it that are really fast. So if you got a few, you know, good artists together, um, you should be able to slap out, you know, a painted comic book in no time. I could probably do one of these a month by myself and I don't know. Then again, I'd, I'd probably figure out a way to make it harder on myself and next thing you know, I'd be taking forever on it. All right, so we'll do the the blue suit. That looks okay. Um, I don't know if the glasses should be the same. Probably. What's a complementary color to blue? Gold. Not good with colors. Um, pink. No. Green. Eh. Bright green. No, that'd be gaudy. Yellow. Yeah, let's do yellow. Screw it. More of a golden yellow. Let's try that. Uh, too dark and nasty. Let's see in the highlights. I might be able to brighten that up. I'll just go with it. But yeah, that's the only thing I don't like sometimes about color modes and things like that the shifting of the actual colors uh, so I'll usually play with the opacities of them uh, the o I'll overlay a couple of them especially if, if a certain color uh, doesn't look right and I can bring it out by adding it one of its complementary colors or something I'll just do that on another overlay or color mode on top of it and just kinda hide the problem or whatever but you know it sh really shouldn't be like that it should be able to just get what I'm after so that's where I think I'll like I said before I'll have to go after the uh, opaque painting method alright so skin tone psh, I always suck at this um, swatches where are you skin tone let's try this one to orange Too red. You know what? But if I take the opacity down, that one will work. Eh, no. Yeah, this is one of the areas I do not enjoy. Like, I can never get the skin tone right. Too yellow. That's eh, close. And what I would recommend here, if you run into the same problem I am, you start with one of them, but then you just blend over with a couple more and various layers, and uh, you can usually get it right. Another thing is to make sure if you are having a problem with something like this, just throw on another layer. You don't want to get too much in the habit of this. Put this on color mode. And at least now what I can do is, if this is even close, which it's, it's close, a little too orangish yeah, especially after I just did that where I, you gotta make sure if you're not using full opacity that you cover the entire area that you're looking to cover because the overlaps are going to be darker but by doing it on a separate layer I can mess with the opacity a bit should I can even grab the uh, color mode and switch it up or the hue saturation sliders all that I can kind of dink around with it and get a little closer to what I'm looking for so I can usually finagle it by a couple layers get a decent skin tone but for some reason uh, I always struggle with that part when I do it this way now when I paint with uh, those regular colors bam instant you know immediate gratification I get it right almost instantaneously but when it's this style and it's got to you know work off the underlying uh, values. It seems to be a bit of a, a bit of a bad word that I won't use at this point, but at this juncture.
but yeah it's it's annoying you know, I'm sitting here just trying to get through the uh, the drawing and what should probably be the easiest aspect of it seems to be difficult but that's where I have to study up and you know watch some tutorials of uh, some artists that are better than myself and figure out what I'm doing wrong there you see how I just admitted that other artists are better than me that's called being truthful I mean I, there's got to be like at least five maybe ten artists out there that are better than me I'm kidding millions probably millions oh god I thought I was I, I thought I was locked in pixels you see how I just went out of the lines that's like fifth grade all over again I just colored outside of the lines that's pretty good that I was uh, I was thinking that the pixels were locked because I'm so used to just coloring inside the lines I'm pretty happy with myself right there alright erase that yeah he looks like he's got a bit of jaundice or something so let's see if I can fix that real quick alright so I could either start by dropping the opacity and then he just looks like he's dirty or hanging out in the dark um, now that I do have uh, color down, I can actually lock the pixels now. I should be able to paint over top of that. Um, what color here? Let me just try to eyeball it from this thing. Yeah, see, and that just dulls it down. So let me try this. I'm going to add one more layer real quick. I've got the brush I need. Let me put this back to normal. Uh, that's on normal mode and I'm just gonna try painting over top of it a little bit with this tone I've got the hard brush set to um, you know transfer on both and uh, I'm just lightly painting in my my brighter tones here just because it's it's easier to get exactly what I'm after without you know going back and forth and wasting too much time here and all you do with this method or technique is, you know, select the color you want, slowly paint it in. I, I got, I'm putting very light pressure right here so that I don't put down too much of it because it is, it is an opaque um, process right here. So if I was to really bear down, I'll show you. It's going to really put down the, the tone. So I just have to lightly paint it in there. right there hold on I'll soften all that right there A good way to do this too is you can paint, you can block in some of these areas and then take your, your smudge brush and soften the uh, edges of the transitions a little bit. Okay, and then as far as the darker tones, yeah, I really want almost, God, I just want to get rid of that other stuff. It was just really, the color of it was going in really kind of sickly. But oh well, um, just for time's sake, I'm going to let it slide, even though that's, you know, it could look a lot better than that. Obviously, those skin tones are pretty off. So let's see if I can fix it with anything else. All right, I've got this tone for my highlight area. And let's see, for a deeper tone, i would probably be... I want to keep it into the browns if I can, but not make sure I don't hit any uh, <clears throat> any greens. Um, so I'm trying to pick that right skin tone and see if I can paint some of that in if it looks any better. If you notice, I'm trying to get rid of that that uh, 
yellowish gold color. Where's my opaque layer? Right, I'm on it. Okay, uh, let's see, in the hair, I wonder if I could, no, maybe not. You know what, go back to the original layer, go back to color mode here, and paint in the hair, and that is locked, so I can go crazy on that. But yeah, that's the benefit of locking the pixels, just so you can color a lot faster too. So the whole process goes faster after you do the initial chopping out of the artwork, uh, dropping in all your tonal values, stuff like that, and then, yeah, it's just quicker at the very end. So there's, oh, let me lighten his eyes too. So now I can grab my dodge tool at the very end, and I'll kind of go through and I usually do my, my last little highlights and punch it up a little bit, you know, just real quick. Make him look a hair more animated by doing that. So yeah, at any rate, that's how I would uh, take a, uh, a line drawing and make it look like a digitally painted comic in, you know, relatively easy fashion or whatever. Um, Could have came out a little bit better than this, but Oh well, this was it is what it is. So I'll merge those down and let me move them side to side and I can show you the progression. So grayscale, color, and where's my line art? Line art. Oh, come on. That's locked. Move that over. Oh boy. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. I'll give you a quarter if you can tell me what that what movie that was from. All right. Goodness. So, anyways, there's the progression uh, from line art to shading to color, and hopefully that showed you something. Uh, sorry it took this long. I didn't mean for this to be a, a lengthy video like this, but um, hopefully it did teach you something. If you got any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. It helps me out, keeps me going on this. Uh, I really enjoy doing this uh, and working with you guys. So all the support you can give definitely uh, helps me to keep going in that direction. So thanks very much. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.